Hi guys, welcome back to GrooveTube. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a Victor Wooten-esque slap exercise where we're going to be double thumping and popping the two fingers. Okay, so in playing this exercise we're going to incorporate uh, several different learning approaches. So we're going to look at, first of all, our posture. So that is how we actually fret the instrument, the technique that's involved in playing it. We're also going to be looking at some theory because the exercise is working around the cycle of fourths. And if you don't know about that, look at some previous exercises or recordings that I've made. And we're also going to be reading um, different rhythms as well. So this exercise uh, incorporates some rhythmic displacement so we're using uh, semi-quavers and we're just moving the beat in which the semi-quavers start, uh, which is quite interesting. Uh, and once we're done with this, you can apply everything we've learned uh, within this lesson. You can apply it to like the context that you're playing and you can change up the exercise to suit yourself. Um, all the, the tabs and backing tracks will be available to download from my website, which is groovetubebase.com. Uh, and if you like what you, you see here, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment if there's anything that you don't understand or if there's anything that you'd like me to cover in future lessons. Okay, right, so on with the exercise. So the first four bars, we're moving around the cycle fourths, starting on a C, F, B flat, E flat, okay, so they're the notes that we're going to be using. Right, so if we look at the first set of semi quavers, so we're just playing the root, fifth, an octave. So to play that, we go a down stroke with the thumb, an up stroke with the thumb, pop with your first finger, and pop with your second finger. Okay, so before we actually move any further, it's a good idea to sit and take some time to get used to that technique. Right, make sure as you're doing it, your hand feels relaxed. Um, when I'm doing it, my hand's actually resting against the body and the strings as well, so it's anchored to the, to the body. Uh, I find that a wee bit easier, so that's maybe something to bear in mind when you're doing it. Uh, it just helps with keeping my, my technique under control. Right, so with a nice relaxed right hand, we're going down, up, hip, pop, pop, down, up, pop, pop. So down, up, pop, pop. Right, so the important thing to, to take from this is to try to get the attack of the note consistent. So the attack of the downstroke should be the same as the attack of the upstroke. It's hard to get that consistent, or at least I find it hard to get it consistent. But that's the that's the name of the game, trying to get it consistent. Uh, as we look at the next uh, the next two bars, we're playing an A flat. D flat, G flat, or F sharp, B. Right, and here we've not got any gaps, so it's like that. Okay, so if we put the first four bars together, we get one E and a rest, three E and a four, one E and a rest, three E and a four, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay, so before you move on to the next bar, just make sure that this bit's consistent. One E under, three E under, four E under, one E under, two E under. Then for the next two bars, you can start off just playing it down where we're resting it. So that's a good way to do it, just play over and over. And once you're used to that and you're quite confident and you're uh, your technique with your right hands coming on, then slowly 
do it without the rest. Yeah, and once you've done that, you're ready to move on to the next bar. So if we look at bar four, right, it starts the same. So we're starting on the downbeat again. So it's one E and a. Then the next A, where it comes in, we're not on the downbeat. We're in the last semiquaver of beat two. So the count would be one E and a, two E and a, three E and. Right, so the count would be one E and a, two E and a, three E and. Four E and a. Yeah, once more. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Yeah, so just make sure that you get that pickup beat before beat three. Okay, so that's the displacements working there. So instead of moving on the beat, we've actually moved that second phrase back one semiquaver. So instead of landing on beat three, we're on the semiquaver before beat three. Yeah? Um, then the, the turnaround to the next section is just the very same as before, so there's no... no sp so the turnaround section um, is over a C, F, B flat, E flat. Right, and again, there's no rest in between each grouping of the semiquavers. So it's one E and a, two E and a, three. Once you're comfortable with that turnaround, we go to the next section. Now, the displacement in this is within the first beat. So that's when we come in with the downstroke. So the count would be one E and a, two E and a, three E and a. So the second part of the phrase lands on the downbeat of beat three. The first part of the phrase lands on the last semiquaver of beat one. So once more, so it's one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Yeah, so it takes a wee bit of time to get used to that, especially when you're changing from playing the downbeat from the, the last section. Just make sure that you observe that rest and always try to count it. Then the turnaround for this section, it's two bars of semiquavers with no rest from the A flat, E flat, uh, uh, sorry, from the A flat, D flat, G flat, F, E, down octave, A, B, G, then you start the full exercise again. So it'll be one E and a. Back to the top. Right, so if I play it from bar 10, so 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 2, E and 3, E and 4, E and 1, E and 2, 2, E and 3, E and 4, E and 1, E. Back to the start. Yeah, I hope that helps you. Um, once you've, you've mastered this, th I mean this is by no way um, like the end of the road for, for this technique. You can then incorporate your own exercises so you, you can mix it up a wee bit. Um, instead of just starting with two thumbs, you could go down, down, up, pop, pop. So you could do it in groups of five. So groups of five, then you can just mix it up in any, any way you find useful. Uh, anyway, I hope that helped uh, and it's just a little introduction to this double thumping technique. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button and please uh, leave a comment uh, and I'll catch you in the next lesson. Cheers!